The cladding is done and how we did it, you see it right after the intro. Welcome back to the channel Oscar Overlander. As you can see here, we have done the cladding. You see that side, you see the side over there, it's all closed and in the video you also will see all the way around that this is all closed. Yeah, this week uh, my um, uh, Sika product 252 showed up and we could start uh, cladding the habitat. And uh, what experience we collected and uh, what you may want to pay attention to. So after I showed you the action from this week, I will share with you minimum six tips um, about working with the Sika product. So finally, I have welded in all these verticals now. You know, because we have confirmation that this, uh, um, the window system works. Uh, also in the kitchen, oops, uh, right here. I just doubled this off and then I have the right measurement in between. And the one on the other side of the bedroom. And I have started cutting the first pennants for the sides. So this, uh, this one is, uh, or has the most work on it because of the two, the one big cutout for the garage door and the bedroom window. So the first one is cut. And now I have no choice. I have to weld the last piece of metal in here, the, uh, the door header. But yeah, uh, that's what this will look like. So we have Wednesday evening and my shelter is closed. That is the passenger side. The front is completely closed. I will cut the opening for the crawl through door later on. This one, it's kind of tough to get it on with my cell phone. But yeah, that side is closed as well. Kitchen window, bedroom window, and the garage door. And the jog is supported by two by fours right now with that overhead metal right there. The inside is, oh, it's kind of echo in here. It's maybe a little um, dark, but yeah, so, oops. It's all closed now. A little shadow here. Uh, nothing special. So, all closed. And in general, uh, I cut everything with that little circle I saw. As a work table, I do have a work table in my workshop, you know, um, which has a, a white um, wood surface. Um, I do not want to wreck that table completely. You know, that's why I decided to put a uh, OSB layer on top of it. It's just loose, rested on top. And then one cardboard layer, uh, I taped it on top of it, as you can see, right? So the cardboard came with the aluminum on top of the pallet. You know, that's a quarter inch uh, thick cardboard sheet. This one is completely intact. So this is one of these I put on here, right? You can see the multiple cuts in there and that worked out really, really well because uh, I didn't cut anywhere through the, the cardboard. I just scraped it. How I made the cutouts like uh, for all the windows and hatches, you know, is I cut them with the circle of saw, as you can see there. I'm cutting. Um, first of all, we, we place the sheets on the on the structure and then we mark them on the inside. 
as usual, you can see, I'm cutting those lines with the circle or so. You know, all the way to close to the corner, and then I take the grinder, lift the, lift the sheet up, and I cut just a little bit to uh, free that uh, piece out there. And then I can just remove it. So the material we have used is a two millimeter aluminum sheet. So our engage is, is um, 080. Tip number one. If you apply the primer, you should wear rubber gloves. Maybe you have seen my previous video, the really last video, I had some black fingernails. It's very difficult to remove this. Uh, from the skin, you can rub it off with a brush, you know, uh, but from the nail, you have to scrape it off with a blade. This is very, very tacky. Better wear rubber gloves and also a mask because there's quite a few fumes coming up which you breathe in. So maybe somebody gets affected by it. That's why better to wear a mask. Tip number two. If you apply the glue 252 on the substrate and then you, you, you tuck your uh, uh, sheet against it and you might have some on your gloves, most likely it ends up on the surface of the sheet. Don't worry about that. As long as the, the, uh, the glue is not cured, you can remove that very easy with this product. It's a 208 and then it's a remover. Zika remover 208 is excellent stuff. You know, uh, you take a cloth, you know, or a paper towel, soak it with that, and then go over the glue. It just disappears as long as it is not cured. If it is cured a day later, then you only can remove it mechanically. Tip number three: that 252. Oops, that 252. It's a kind of I don't want to say dense but it is for sure thicker, you know, and stiffer than silicone. If you have used silicone in the past then you know how easy it is to get it out of the cartridge. You know, this one is coming out tough, really tough. You have to press hard, you know, my son and I, we always switch, you know, that we don't have so much hand pain basically, you know, because you have to press hard. So therefore, if you have a powered caulking gun, like a Makita, Dewalt, Milwaukee, whatever, Ryobi, you know, try it to, to push it out with that. I'm not sure it will work because some of the caulking guns, they are not strong enough. You know, they just they start ratching, you know, because it's just too stiff, but try it. And uh, if somebody has done it, please let, it, let me know in the comments below and or us know because uh, whoever, I mean, I'm done now with it, uh, except I have to do the, uh, the, uh, uh, the corner, the beads, you know, like the cover caps basically on all the corners. I have to use that material as well again, but that's not so much as uh, for all the cladding. So I will most likely do it by hand again. But if you, if you plan to do such a project, you know, it's maybe worth buying one of these powered, powered caulking guns. Tip number four. Make sure you have uh, something to adjust the panels when you install them so you can adjust them. So basically feed the bottom by, you know, in different uh, thicknesses. The Europeans, they use these type of uh, glazing packers. So that one is a six millimeter, the black one, and this one is a two millimeter, as you can see. In North America, we mostly use uh, horseshoe shims. They come in the same thicknesses, one sixteenth, eighth, three sixteenths. You know, they have also colors, you know, 1 16th is blue. And uh, I don't use work often with those, so I don't know all the colors. But um, we also have these breakaway shims. They call breakaway. They come in increments of 1 16th. The whole stack is always one inch, and they come in increments of 1 16th. You see here, right there? This is 1 16th. And then you can, if you, if you don't need you know all of them you can break them away from the pack and also you can shorten them because they are perforated here uh, for the length you need right so that's why they call breakaway shims you can you can see the perfect gaps three millimeter there three millimeter there 
from time to time you can see my toothpicks in there right three millimeter all the way all the way three millimeter so i was going to talk about these uh shims uh, you can see here we have sometimes different shims here you see there's a blue one which is two millimeter tall and here's a black one it's five millimeter and that's why you need uh, different shims to adjust your your gaps all the way along right uh, i i made sure that i have always the original cut at the bottom you know so that it's most likely very straight not the one i cut the the uh, the one i cut is always at the top which will be covered with a with a, a, a l angle later on now we come to tip number five and tip number five is probably the most important one and i like to talk about thermal expansion gaps you see here that gap yeah uh, that gap is in my case three millimeters or one eighth and uh, how do you find out what gap you need i will explain it but we have to switch to my computer screen so the gap size between the sheets is depending on the thermal expansion to find out what the thermal expansion is in in measurement in millimeter or in in inches is it important to know what color will it be on the end that is step number one find out what color you will paint it second we need to know what is my actual sheet size so let's go let's go into that step by step so here is an overview over a let's say normal sunny summer day you know not extreme here on the left side, you can see different colors. Well, don't wonder what mousy means. <laughs> it is translated, it was before mouse gray. Yeah, so that is mousy. So which is actually my color. My, my color will be mousy. <laughs> so you can see on a normal day, like about somewhere between 30 and 32 degree, you know, I would say in the summertime, the aluminum heats up to 70 degrees Celsius. Black is even hotter, you know. And then if you compare it to white, that is uh, not really half of it, but it is way lower, right? It reflects the sun streams. Now we know what the uh, maximum surface heat will be on a normal sunny day. You know, like I don't go out off of extremes here. We know that. Now we put it into a calculator which I have here, that's aluminum. And uh, the length of the sheet, so now, now we are talking about the horizontal. Yeah, so the sheets are four feet wide or 48 inches, which is a millimeter, 1,200 uh, millimeter. So we put that in here, 1.2 meter. Um, that is um, the sheet length. And we go off of, let's say, yeah, minus 10, that's fine. I'm not, uh, I don't plan to go to the Antarctica, you know, or even Alaska. Well, maybe Alaska, but not in the winter time. So minus 10 is fine. And then maximum temperature will be, we saw 70 on that list, but we put in 80, yeah, plus 80 degrees Celsius. Now calculate it, and you can see my sheet expands by 2 point five nine to two point six millimeter and this is the reason why i have a three millimeter gap now if we uh, do this calculation on the vertical length yeah uh, which is not really so important because you can leave top bottom uh, plenty of gap and you can hide it basically uh, underneath the cover caps on the corners but still let's do it so the sheet is eight feet long so uh, 96 inches 96 inches uh, converted to millimeter is 2,438. So let's say 2 meter 44. 2 meter 44. We, we take the same temperatures, you know, calculate and look. That sheet expands almost a quarter inch. And finally, tip number six. 
Tip number six is basically um, following uh, what we just uh, learned, like the gap, the gap size. We have to, or that's how I plan it, I have to close the gaps. So, but we cannot use glue, like the same glue as we used uh, on, to glue on the panels because it gets hard and pretty stiff, you know, and also silicone wouldn't be the right map, maybe, but I'm going the safe way. I use a sealant which stays forever soft, yeah, or elastic. Because when the panels start moving, when they, when they start moving to each other, yeah, the the the, uh, the panels need to be able to to push that elastic sealant a little bit out of their way, and then when they shrink again because it cools down, then the elastic sealant needs to follow the 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 panel again. So it has to expand again, right? So if you use a hard glue, it it doesn't allow to the, the panel to move. You know, and then what will happen when the panel can't move on the sides, it will do this, right? And we have some bows in there, you know, it will warp. So that's what we don't want. So this is it uh, for this week from me, um, from, from us, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I'm really happy that I have now the, the cladding on, you know, and we basically can plan the next step. But we are not there yet because the next step will be the insulation, you know. Um, uh, but I'm not there yet because I have to fill all the gaps, you know. Um, I have to fill the gaps inside at the bottom, you know, on the corners and on the roof. So there is uh, quite a bit uh, of prep work to do before we can start with the insulation. So I don't want to make the second step before the, the first. And that's why, yeah. I'm not sure what I'm showing next week, but I will see you next Friday. Oh.